We can't get enough of images like these. They show how lives are on the line every single day. And successful military missions, they depend on the ultimate teamwork. And this teamwork deals with something very close to my heart. We're talking about the weather. Mother Nature, she can be tricky and often unpredictable. And that's why the military keeps a very close eye on her. You are witnessing preparations for war. Don't like to make war, but when we have to put ordnance on target, that's our job. Whether it's the war on terror or the fight for freedom, successful missions depend on the men and women of the U.S. military. And their success often begins with the unlikeliest of American heroes. Keeping these planes aloft is a team effort. From the guys down here on the deck to the meteorologists up there in that tower. Without knowing what the weather's going to be like, it's not going to be safe in the skies. Is this nine floors up? 06 level, Metro office. One of the men in charge, Petty Officer David Stickler. This is like, the, I would say, the most important part of the ship, isn't it? Uh, some people don't see it that way, oh, but to us, of course, it's the most why? important. Everything starts here. Stickler and his group of shipboard areographers. Visibility, sky coverage. Or AGs, as they are called, are the meteorologists who help missions happen. I like to look at them as a decision-making tool, part of our matrix, you know, hey, this is where we want to be. This is how we want to get there. And they basically tell us whether it's a good idea or not. Pilots like Mike Messler have faced frightening forces of nature while running missions over Afghanistan and Iraq. We're running through some thunderstorms out there, running into some St. Elmo's fire. You're seeing flashes of lightning all around. Uh, the whole wind windscreens lighting up with uh, electricity. Their missions became more dangerous and targets harder to hit and some smart bombs aren't so smart in adverse weather. The planes tend to fly pretty high. They want to drop their bomb and get out of there. So if there's a cloud layer in between or if there's a lot of humidity, that can, that can adversely yeah. affect the, the, would. La the lazing of the target. If the strike package gets there and it doesn't have the right weaponry on it because we didn't look at the weather, uh, then we just lost a you know, high value terrorist right. target because we didn't take weather in, in consideration. There's a lot more riding on their forecast than a rained out barbecue. Ground forces rely heavily on the weather data these guys have access to. They need to prepare for high winds and the sandstorms that they kick up, which have been known to drift out to sea. The forecaster comes up and says, hey sir, we have a, a sandstorm heading our way. Zero visibility, let alone sand, can ground air ops. Safety is the most important consideration on any carrier. Pilots know that nearly one in four accidents on board are weather related. Fog came out of pretty much nowhere. Lieutenant Kate Stockton still can't believe the fog they got the day before we arrived. She had to talk a young pilot out of the sky and onto the carrier's deck because he couldn't even see it. As far as that goes, uh, we just have to rely on our experience. That fog caught them all by surprise. But the forecasters made good. Right they now. delivered a new Roger forecast now. to assistant navigator Brian Stoddard. This is where it's clearing the quickest. This is where we recommend you go. And we, we uh, fire up the reactors and we head that way. Soon, air ops were again underway. Up in Metro, weather analysis happens 24-7 using cutting edge technology. Then there's old school. Every hour when the observers come in, they give it a little tap. And there's an advantage to having a corner office with a view. You ever just poke your head out the porthole here and check it out? Quite often. Observation first, tools second. We are out here on the fantail, a great spot to release a weather balloon. All we need now is a balloon inflation room. Got one right there. Hybrids of high tech and old school, these balloons use sensors and radio signals to send back information on current atmospheric conditions. These are all designed for the different types of devices you send up? That's correct. This one's a 100 gram balloon. All right, AG, let's do it, huh? Back of the ship and here we go. They can launch whenever needed, usually once or twice a week.
This and every carrier team has its weapons and the experience to use them. But in this game, meteorologists, they're in on every play. You know, we drive 6,500 people and $3 billion worth of equipment into a super typhoon. The Admiral gets pretty upset, and rightfully so. The stakes are pretty high.